Hey everybody, I'm John. This is the Midnight Paint and Body Channel. And in this video, we're going to use this to turn this into this. So here's what we're working on guys. So uh, we've got a 2010 Ford Escape. Uh, it's got some typical rusted out quarter panel. Now on these, uh, there's no aftermarket parts available to repair the quarter panel. Um, if you were to buy, say, a quarter panel from Ford or the Auto Directors, now the way these modern cars come, if you were to buy this quarter panel, you are getting the entire side aperture of the car. So it's not really an option for fixing an old car. You can definitely make that panel. Um, it's not real complex because you're probably only kind of coming up to the body line. But that all takes time. A better option on this type of thing, it's something I've done on other vehicles before, is to use a front fender. Now, as you can see, I'll move that out of the way again. So you can see our quarter panel shape. And then you look at our front fender shape. They're, they're the same basic design, obviously, front to back. Now this, in this case, you know, it's, yeah, she's, she's pretty rotten. There's not much left there. Actually, you can see the, the inner is rotten out too, so we're gonna have to do something with that. But what we're gonna be doing here, now I just happen to have a damaged right front fender for a Ford Escape in my stash of parts. But if you're doing this, I mean, because you can't get this panel, you might wanna just buy an aftermarket fender, which is something I have done for cars in the past. Just buy a $100, $200 fender, and then you just make your patch out of it. Better option, Go to the auto records. Now, if they've got a rust-free quarter panel, they're not gonna wanna just cut a piece out of it for you. They're gonna wanna cut off the entire quarter panel and sell you that, and rightfully so. I mean, these youth parts are valuable to them. But if they have a front fender on a car, better yet, if they have a damaged front fender, you know, maybe you've got a car that's hit in the front, making that fender worthless, they'll probably sell you the fender cheap cheap and you know that's what I would have done if you know in this case I had a fender it just kind of worked out I'm not even sure where it came from but it's it's damaged so so what we're going to be doing is cutting this section out of the quarter panel cutting a section out of that fender making it fit we're probably gonna have to box in the end down here so I'm gonna start tearing this thing down a bit I'm gonna pull this rear bumper cover off Pull the tail light out and just kind of get ready, unhook the battery and probably pull some interior trim off. And then we'll have another look. I'll kind of show you guys what we're up against. So I've got her stripped down a bit here, guys. Rear bumper cover off, tail light out, uh, just basic stuff. Battery's unhooked. Always make sure you do that before doing any kind of welding or anything. Uh, we're not there yet, but I always kind of do it first. So I'm just going to kind of trim this back. I always start trimming small. Now I'm going to stay just below this body line and see how the metal looks. Probably come to around here. See where we're kind of done with the swelling in here. Um, I thought we were gonna have to box in the end of this, but we're actually okay. The metal's good and solid down in here. So we'll trim and kind of keep a little bit of that lip there. But I'm just gonna start cutting that off and we'll kind of see what we have to do with the inner panel once we've got this outer bit out of the way. Now when you're cutting like this, so because there is an inner panel in there, we wanna cut really shallow. We don't wanna cut right through because we don't wanna cut that inner panel. Not yet anyway, we're probably gonna be cutting a piece out, but we'll start with that and uh, see what we have. Now there you can see why I said you want to cut real shallow because obviously we don't want to be 
cutting out that inner panel. But that kind of shows us what we're up against here. Now you can see these from the factory have a strip of glue around this outside perimeter, gluing it to that inner panel. And it's not necessarily why it rusts, but you can see this is where it's been catching moisture. And, uh, and there's our inner that we're gonna have to repair as well. And it looks like I'm gonna have to trim this back a little farther. Oh, and look at that, I did cut through that inner here. So I'll be more careful when I trim up here and we're gonna be cutting this out anyway. So I'm gonna trim a little more, bring you guys back for a look. So now that we've got this guy cut out, uh, I'm not gonna repair the inner yet. I'm gonna make this outer piece first. Um, kind of looking at the shape here. I think I'm gonna take from this fender right down in this area and I'll just cut it way too big and we'll kind of fit it. And then from there, we'll make a piece for the inner. So here's our outside piece, kind of roughly cut out. So. As you can see, it's the same shape. It's going to fit well. Now I'm going to trim this to basically butt right up to what we have here. And the same here and here. We'll get this piece fitting nicely. And then we'll move on to repairing the inner. So here's my patch piece trimmed up to fit. So I like to trim them so we do that nice butt weld uh, without having overlapping metal. So that's going to fit nice and tight up in there. I did cut it just a hair too small here. I'm going to have to cut a little wedge of metal to put in down there, but that's a, a minor thing. So now that we've got that, I'm going to start working on a piece for the inner. So I just cut another piece out of that same fender to make an inner panel. So you can see I've just cut it to fit, butted up. I've just got it held in place with a couple of magnets there right now. So I'm going to go around and just start welding this into place and then we'll go from there. Now you see we're okay here because we've got that inner panel, but you always want to be aware of what's going on inside the panel. You don't want to just start welding if you've got insulation and glue and crap going on inside. Now on this one, I do have a little bit of access here. It's kind of dark, but you can see in there where we're cut out. So I'm going to kind of cover this up because I don't want sparks coming inside the vehicle and I will be constantly checking to make sure everything is okay. We don't want things catching on fire, obviously. Knock on wood. I haven't lit a customer's car on fire yet, so safety third. So I've jumped ahead on you guys a little bit here. I've gone around and welded that inner panel into place, uh, put some primer on it, and then I just gave it just a really thin coat of some brush on seam sealer, just to ensure there's no porosity because we want that good and watertight. And then we will undercoat that inside of that panel when everything is done in the end. But I'm gonna let that sit over lunch so that it doesn't catch on fire when I weld it, when it's wet. Uh, when I come back, we're going to weld that outside panel on. So here's our patch piece clamped into place. So just loosely clamped in there. So as you can see, it needs to be just kind of pushed into place a little bit, but we're just butting up to the original metal. So I'm going to start welding this in. Now, anytime you're doing this type of welding, lots of spots, spot, 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 lots of cooling, and just kind of work your way back and forth and let it cool down. You don't want to warp. The existing metal, this way we're going to keep our body work down to a minimum. So I'm going to set up here and just start tacking this in place. Um, just like I mentioned earlier, you can see I've got a bit of a gap there, which I'm just going to have to put a little wedge of sheet metal in to fill that. But that's a good thing about metal. Make it too small, you can make it bigger. So I'm going to start welding this up and I'll uh, take you guys along a little bit as I go.
So there's my welds all ground down and cleaned up. So kind of blended in, as you can see, the patch looks good. So now I'm going to give this all a coat of a short strand fiberglass body filler. So that's going to just kind of fill in the welds and any chance of any porosity in the welds, it'll uh, fill that stuff up a little bit too. So I'm going to do that. And then, well, let me grab my light here. I don't know how much we can see inside there. But there's, eh, yeah, you probably can't see much because of where it is. But I am going to spray some undercoat on the inside of the panel there. And then, like I said before, once everything's done, I will also undercoat up inside the back side of this panel here where I welded the inner in. So I'm going to go mix up a little filler, and then I'll bring you guys back to see that. So this is just some Evercoat Everglass. It's a uh, short strand fiberglass filler. Now, anytime you're doing welding or you've got heavily worked metal, you want to give it a coat of this stuff before body filler. Now, this stuff is waterproof uh, compared to regular body filler, so it's going to give it some extra protection. Um, it's not. 100% necessary, but it does do a little better job having this on before your filler. So I'm going to basically coat the whole thing and then we'll be knocking the bulk of it back off. But this is going to smooth everything out nice and fill in those welds. And we really want to smash this stuff into those welds. With any little porosity that could be there, this is going to take care of it. So there's our fiberglass filler sanded down. Um, so as you see with that, it's just kind of staying in the low spots of the welds and the grinder marks. This is just a super thin coat. It just kind of seals everything up. Um, as you saw, I just took it off with the orbital because I'm not at this point really focusing on making the body work straight. Um, but you do want to take this stuff down quite a bit because you don't want it higher than your body filler, if that makes sense because this sands harder. So you don't want to be sanding through your body filler and hitting this because then it's going to make an uneven surface. So take this down quite a bit. And then I'm going to give this a coat of body filler now. We'll come back in a bit for a look at that. So there we are, body filler all sanded down. This is ready to mask up for some primer. So as you can see, looking up close, this is really a thin coat of filler. It's just leveling all the surface, not much to it. Um, I'm not recommending you do your body work with a sander like that. If you're not experienced, you know, use a sanding block, get everything nice and flat if you don't. You know, if you haven't really developed a feel for this stuff. Um, and always remember, feel is very important in body work. If, if you can feel it, you can, you're going to see it once the panel is painted. So always use your feel to make sure your filler is not high or low or lumpy, wavy. So we are good at this. I'm going to throw some paper around this and get some primer on it. Well, good morning. It's the next day. Um, it's actually 4 a.m. Yeah. You know, I was never an early riser in my life until I uh, pretty much turned 50 and everything goes to crap. You turn into this person that wakes up way too early and can't sleep anymore. But anyway, one of the benefits of working from home is you can just go out and get to work. So, 
I got some primer on this quarter panel yesterday, as you can see. So she's all cured up, ready to prep. So I'm going to go ahead and get this sanded. Uh, I'm not going to record this part. At this point, I will use a block on it, make sure everything's good, but I know it's not going to take much. Uh, so I will get this prepped up. I do have a rear bumper cover coming for this car. Might be this afternoon, but I don't think I'm going to have it until tomorrow morning. So I'm not going to paint until I get that, because it's got to be painted as well. But for now, I will get this prepped. Next time you guys see it, I should have it in the booth, and we'll get some paint on it. Well, it's the next day. I've got the Ford Escape all masked up in the booth. Uh, my rear bumper cover showed up today, which I wasn't expecting until tomorrow. So that's a bonus. That means I'll get this done a day earlier than expected. So quarter panels all prepped up, ready to paint. Uh, pretty basic stuff with the prep work. Um, the primer is all finished with these types of colors. Now, in this case, what we're dealing with is a Ford code UH. Um, I believe they call it Tuxedo Black. So this is their black metallic. It does have a really heavy metallic in it. So we'll be putting paint over the primer, over the repair area. And then we kind of blend the paint off and then the rest of the panel will get clear coated. And in this case, I'm just going to do a little uh, solvent blend with the clear and then polish it back after up on the top pillar there. And the rear bumper cover, I mean that, uh, yeah, coat of sealer and paint that as well. So uh, maybe I'll bring you guys along uh, for a little bit of it. I've done paint videos before, but uh, yeah, kind of give you a bit of an idea what's involved. But other than that, you'll see it when it's all shiny. All right, guys, there's another job knocked out, ready to go back to the customer. So now, obviously, I recognize that not everybody has a big shop like this and all the tools and everything necessary to do this kind of work. But it kind of this, what I've done here should give you an idea of, you know, what you can do with a few basic tools. You know, if you don't have a welder, you could do a patch like this with structural adhesive or panel bond. If you don't have paint guns and an air compressor, most auto parts stores that mix automotive paint can put your factory paint color into an aerosol can. So maybe you're just going to finish it off with some spray paint. You know, maybe you're going to tackle this and it's not going to be a perfect turnout, a perfect finish. But if you're getting rid of that rust and making it look better and you've done it yourself, what the heck? You know, maybe it'll uh, just make your car last a few more years, look a little more presentable. Look a little less like a heat score driving around, you know, getting pulled over by the cops for, for driving a rusty old car. Maybe that's all you're after. But uh, as always, I do hope this helps you guys out. And as always, if you've got any questions about this process or any other process, 
hit me up down in the comments and I'll do my best to help you out. Um, again, I am not the best body man. I'm just kind of showing you guys what works for me, how I do things. And I typically have, you know, pretty good success with my jobs. Um, you know, it's, this is a bit of a budget repair. It's not cheap, but it's, it's not like replacing an entire panel, which you're probably not going to do on an old car like this. So, as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, and leave me a comment down below. I always like hearing from you guys. I like getting questions and stuff. I like be able to help out a little bit when I can. So, as always, guys, I hope to see you in the next one.